Located about six kilometres from Sydney's CBD, on Sydney's eastern shore lies a beautiful little surf beach called Tamarama. It's just under a kilometre's walk south of the much more popular and well-known Bondi Beach. Now, it is hard to get parking there, you can see there's only one road, but once you do find a spot, it's a great place for surfing, I'm told, to bring the family to, and it's great for photography as well. Well, today isn't really about Tamarama Beach. It's just an excuse to show some shots and show a lot that I've been working on. Um, it's also a great place for photography. I've brought Lila along with me and we're gonna run around and I'll show you some of the cool spots. Right now, I've got Lila behind the camera. Give me a little nod, good work. So that's pretty much it. It's, it's an excuse to show off this LUT. I've been working really hard on it. I've been doing lots of photography lately and as well as looking at some of my own work and improving my own work, I've been looking at some of my peers in the wedding industry and also some people online like Danny Diamond and Andrew Atwell, I think his name is. And although what you can do is get a bit overwhelmed and you can have like many different looks, I'm trying to come up with one look and I do want to embrace a teal and orange LUT because that leaves skin tones alone and kind of, if anything, boosts the skin tones. I've worked out a triad of colors that are complementary. So you've got not really orange, but it's a yellow orange on one side and then your teal on the other and then to complement it, otherwise it gets a bit skewed and it looks a bit um, tinted is you put magenta into the shadows. And then it's a bit of pushing and pulling. I think I'm up to version like 78 on one of them before I change the name again. So a hundred versions later, I have come up with this look. Anyway, I'll explain at the end of the video how I made that, how to use it. Should be quite handy, even if you don't use the LUT on how to make LUTs yourself. That'll be in the description below for free. All right, Lila, let's go and look around at some of the hot spots for photography because Tamarama Beach is really good for photography, uh, especially Instagrammers. All right, let's go for a walk. Okay, so we're gonna go down there. We'll sit on the sand and then we'll go and look at some other photo spots. Right up in front of us is a very popular Instagram place underneath that little cavey thing there. And then there's a walkway on this side and that's pretty much it, but it's pretty cool. Lila, ready to go for a walk? All right. Even though I've got the ND filter on, I'm at one on 8,000 at f2.5. Crazy. Hey Lila, what can you see? Is anyone surfing? Is this an actual surf beach? I guess it is. So these shots are handheld, active stabe. And the only ND filtering I'm doing is a polarizer, circular polarizer. And you can see that in the gradation of the sky there. This is a cool little walkway. Luckily we brought Lila here so that you can look at her instead of my ugly mug. So this walkway goes all the way around. Trying to handheld walk. They got a little fish and chip cafe here. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Go. Go. This is the spot that made me actually want to come here because Instagrammers love it. Okay, I'm gonna to have to use S-Log for this because we're in the shade and I do want to show a little bit of the background which is in direct sunlight. What I'm gonna do here, I'm getting Lila to hold my hat. When you're in a pinch, I use auto white. I hold it on the hat like that and then lock off my white balance like that there we are 
And that's the white balance I'm going to stick with. Because in a pinch, I don't have my monitor or anything. So Lila, you can put the hat on. Have a little look at the view. What do you reckon, eh? I don't have a million followers, but maybe after this shot, we will. So yeah, this is the main reason why I did want to come here. Probably easier for photography, maybe a little bounce card or a flash or something. But for video, S-Log will have to do. So to use my light on this shot, obviously I'll convert it first to a Rec. 709 and then mine is a creative light. So you put that on Rec. 709 footage. Good surfing here, is it? Yeah, very good. Yeah? But everyone's still wearing spring suits. Is it cold as shit? It's not that bad. Not that bad? No. All right, good luck. Cheers, man. Hey, guys. Oh, big golfs, huh? All right. Well, see you later. I'll stay in S-Log for a little bit longer. It's probably easier for videographers to be in the better light. Lila, turn around, that's it. I'm just gonna stay on S-Log for this, I think. I'm on my 20 mil 1.8 and I've gone back to an auto white. This LUT that I'm using is gonna have a neutral white. Am I making you rush? No. Sorry about that. This is a cool spot to come, but there's a cafe right there, so I, I won't embarrass Lila. We'll just go down there. There are sandstone cliffs on both sides of this beach within a short walking distance. So that's good for weddings, bringing models here. And what's good about both sides is, depending where the sun is, you can choose. So there's one here, and there's one, well, a very bright one over that side. Well, that's just about it for Tamarama Beach. We will jump back on the computer now, and I'll show you how to use the light. Thank you so much, Lila, for helping out. That really made it uh, much better than looking at my ugly mug for the whole time. All right, let's go jump on the computer, and I'll show you how I made the light. All right. Must be a K7 force field. Don't worry, I'll break you out of there. Glad I could help. So why use a LUT? Well, a LUT can help you tie in all your shots, all your separate shots, and make it look like it's part of the same universe. Now this is true even if you're using separate cameras. So obviously that's a drone, and this was the same camera but shot on a separate day. So it helps out tie all your shots together and helps it look like it's all part of the same story. A LUT can even add to your story via colour theory. And also, if you just want to get away from looking too accurate, like a TV show or, or like watching sports or something like that, you can also add a little bit of mystery to your shots and romanticise certain things about your shot that would otherwise look a bit plain. And speaking of colour theory, I went with a triad colour scheme, which has the colours equally spaced out on the colour wheel. Now, it's almost exactly like a teal and orange LUT, with some little subtle differences I'll show you later, but also adding one main difference, which was the violet, bit of magenta into the shadows, which you can see here. Okay, now we're gonna jump into Lightroom and I'll show you how I made the LUT. So this is a before and this is an after. Now, when making these LUTs, I don't copy the white balance, exposure or contrast, and I leave that up to you. We'll go through some of the settings, the main settings. Highlights are down, blacks are down. The vibrance and saturation is almost untouched, and that's because I do a lot of that in the HSL. With the tone curve, I'm matting some whites, lifting the blacks just a tiny bit. I think it's up around 8% and I'm adding a little bit of color only in the shadows there. Now, I'm also double, doubling down on that in my color grading tab rollout. Um, and technically I could have done all of that in the tone curve, but I was fine tuning a lot. And like I said, I got to like version 100 on this. Now, a lot of the work is being done in the HSL. So the yellows are being brought uh, more towards the orange and that's can be seen here. You wanna bring the yellows a bit towards the triad color scheme and the same goes for 
the greens towards the aquas and the blue also towards the aqua. That's your teal. Now with saturation, I'm just bringing down the greens mainly and I've decided to avoid purple just so it doesn't get too muddy in the shadows. With the luminance, I'm bringing down the greens but not in a um, aggressive way. And if I didn't bring down the luminance of the aquas and blues, then some of these shots just got a little bit too unreal looking. So there's lots of fine tuning there. There's a little bit of mid-tones just to warm up the shot and tie it all together. And like I said, the violet or the magentas in the shadows really helps balance out this color wheel. And actually, I can actually show you that here. If I jump in to um, my Lumetri scopes, roll out. Now, without the magenta, what I had was a lot of colors just skewing off to this side, um, more of the green side, the more tinted side of the uh, color spectrum. So without that, I did notice that I really needed a, a lot of magenta in my LUT. I started off this whole project going for a bit of a teal and orange uh, LUT, but then realized quickly that it did look unbalanced. I think that's about it. Oh, no, I'm not finished. There is one main thing. Now, when we're color grading and matching different cameras, a lot of what people respond to is the skin tones from cameras like Canon, differing from Sony to Canon. You can bypass a lot of that, or at least get a lot closer by just pushing the skin tones around in the camera calibration rollout. Now, I'll show you the difference. So that's a very Sony looking skin tone in comparison. Um, I did go a little bit heavier. I was up around here for a while and then had to balance that out. Um, this isn't um, gonna be a tutorial about camera calibration. But what does happen is, it actually changes all the pixels. So you do get a little bit closer to a certain look, which is then easier to match different cameras. I hope that makes sense. I don't want to make this video too long. Right, so once I'm happy, I make LUTs using this IWLT BAP LUT generator, which I will put a link for in the description. So basically you get a color swatch like this. This has 512 colors, that's a before and after and you then export it out and you bring it back in here as a PNG and you generate a cube and it'll work out the difference between your neutral held and your preset held and it'll make it a LUT. And once you uh, convert that, like I'm going fast, sorry about that, but like I said, it's not a tutorial covering everything. Then you bring it into your editor and I'm using Premiere Pro and I like, like to load mine into Creative. That way I do have some control over the LUT as well in post. And that's pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoy using the LUT. If you do uh, use it, please, um, I don't mind, please use it. Um, it'll be interesting to see what you're using it on. So uh, send me a link hey, to what you're working on. That'll be pretty cool. Um, I did want to make another version where I'm not pushing the shadows up, but I ended up just making it more subtle and just putting it all in the one LUT. What I was thinking of changing was, since I'm pushing up the blacks and I'm matting the blacks, and I'm also matting the whites, I thought about making a LUT that doesn't actually change, you can see here on the scopes, that doesn't actually mat the blacks. And the reason why the green is staying down there is because that's saying that here in the shadows we're seeing a lot more magenta. So I thought about doing that and then I probably still could if you want me to, but I turned it down and I actually quite like that the way it is. Anyway, this video is going to be very long. So I hope you enjoyed and or at least found some of it useful and I'll see you guys on the next video. Okay, see you for now.